morning is our coldest morning so far. There's so much more snow than I was anticipating, so that might uh, cause some issue. We have reached the headwater of the Kootenai River. All-Terrain Trails is proudly associated with four-wheel freedom. Your adventure begins here. And a special thanks to Cobra Electronics for supplying communications on this adventure. Watch all of our adventures ad-free and help support the channel over on our Patreon page. Hey everyone, welcome to this All-Terrain Trails episode. I am on my way to pick up a special friend of mine. Uh, his name is John and he's flying in from Arizona right now. Uh, he lives in Flagstaff. We flew out of Phoenix this morning. So I'm gonna go pick him up at the Calgary Airport and uh, he's gonna ride around in the Troopy with me and we're gonna go explore some of Southern British Columbia. So he's gonna be here for about five days and uh, that gives us plenty of time to go see some cool stuff. Last year I went to Arizona with John and uh, so you might remember him from our, uh, our Arizona episodes. Looks like we got us a little leak. Our rock from that last trail perfectly punctured in here. And now, uh, now he's coming up to, to visit me. The trip that I've planned now is go and follow the Kootenai River from as far south in Canada as you can go to the U.S. border, all the way to almost its headwater. And then over the next few days, we're going to be following the Kootenai River on dirt roads and paved roads, and uh, maybe some four-wheel drive tracks in between. Um, I just, I love the Kootenai River, and uh, and I think it'll be, be a lot of fun to, to follow it on, uh, on some trails over the next couple days. Um, yeah, so come along with us and, uh, and enjoy this episode as we take you into BC and, uh, and explore more of the Kootenai River. On this adventure, the crew will consist of my good friends, Billy and his 2021 third gen Tacoma, Jason and his 2013 second gen Tacoma. Sorry, I only need a two wheel drive. I gotta put it in four. Just floated right across. John riding in and driving the troopy with me. You're a little Max Trax fisher. And myself. Uh, the vehicle is up there and the river is down there, so we're gonna have to walk the rest of the way. John's flight has been delayed several hours this afternoon, which means we'll be rolling into camp much later than expected. I finally get the relieving text message that he's cleared customs and baggage claim and that he's ready to be picked up. I hope he's ready for a late night ahead. Just toss it anywhere. Oh, cold. There. How's the flight? All right, so I picked John up at the airport. It's a success. Uh, flight went here. all good. He's here. Um, so that's great. We're on our way out of Calgary now, heading south to southern BC. Um, gonna meet up with a couple other friends and go camping for a few days. So. Yeah, it should be a good trip. Darkness sets in as we traverse through southern Alberta into BC. We meet up with Billy and Jason, then head further south towards the border. It's not long before the road deteriorates from pavement to dirt and tire pressures need to be lowered. British Columbia has a giant network of old Forest Service roads and two-track. This trail is special as it will take us to a remote section of the Canada-US border, only accessible by four-wheel drive. It's close to midnight now, and we still have another hour ahead of us on this trail before reaching camp. This might turn out to be one of my latest nights rolling into camp ever. It's getting a little cold, man. It's getting <laughs> a little cold. Uh, going to camp. I'm hoping soon. Yeah, see so, what, uh, I'm a little tired, man. It's a unique way to spend after getting, getting off the plane. we make the push into the Black Abyss. There are no cities, towns, or other settlements even remotely close to our current location. 
The only light source comes from our trucks pushing on down the trail. Beyond us is true darkness. Yeah, it's a lot smoother than I thought it'd be. Unforgiving weather conditions change from rain to snow to wind. The forecast tells us these harsh conditions will persist late into the night, but should ease up tomorrow morning. If you've never camped in the rain and the snow before, it's an experience I think everyone should have at least once. This way, we can be more thankful for when conditions are good. All right, guys, it's late in the evening here. Um, we are just rolling into camp. We're, we're just a couple kilometers away from the border now. I'm uh, taking this little off-road bush track. Um, we're gonna end up, the, the, the plan is to camp right on the, the Canada-US border tonight, uh, overlooking uh, Lake Kukanusa and, uh, and the Kootenai River. So we are just making our way through this, uh, this bush track. It is wet, it's icy, it's snowy. Um, and we're having a, having a grand old time. I'm learning to drive stick shifts, right? And, drive. and John's driving the Troopy. One thing I love about getting to camp after dark is not being able to see much of the surrounding landscape. This makes for a nice surprise the following morning to see just where you ended up. And where we did end up is magnificent. We take the morning at a slower pace than usual after arriving at camp after 1am. We take this time to do a hard reset on the interior camping system of the vehicles and enjoy a much needed coffee with breakfast. Our objective for today is to drive and explore along the border cut line for several kilometers, then turn north to follow the Kootenai River. We plan on seeing as much of this extraordinary river as possible, and I've mapped out a 375 kilometer route that follows the river as closely as possible. In order to do this, the route will take us on an adventure over paved roads, forest service roads, and four-wheel drive trails, all in the hopes of experiencing the little known parts of the Kootenai. Alrighty guys, so behind me is the Canada-US border. We rolled in here last night, uh, weren't able to see everything that was around us here, and we woke up at camp this morning and uh, we were camped just a little ways back from the border here. So uh, this morning we came back to the border to check everything out, and it is just gorgeous around here. The weather is perfect, not too much snow on the ground. Yeah, it's just it's just, just great to be back. I, I always find these, um, these kind of bush tracks down to the border, you know, that's not a designated uh, crossing on pavement. Um, you can't technically cross here, but I just think it's so cool that you can take a dirt track, an, an off-road trail, 
right to the border. I think that's that's really cool. So this is the farthest point south we're going to be going on this trip. And behind me here is the Kootenai River slash uh, Lake Kukanusa. So we're going to follow this river all the way back north to hopefully right around its headwaters. So this is kind of the farthest south that we can access this river in Canada. Also known as the Slash, this cut line is maintained through a joint effort between Canada and the United States. It is the longest maintained border cut line in the world, spanning over 5,500 miles from Maine to Alaska. This treeless zone is 20 feet wide, covering everything from isolated islands to steep hillsides, vast mountain ranges, and thick forests. Most of the Slash is so remote it will never receive any visitors other than wild animals and the crews who maintain it. Now heading away from the border, it's time to check out a few points of interest I have marked on the map. the same river that fed that lake where we were on this morning, the Kootenai River, and uh, we've come about uh, just under 100 kilometers, kind of zigzagging back and forth across the river, and now we're on its banks, and the water looks a bit low, like I'm where I'm standing, you can tell that the water definitely used to be above where it is now, but it's great to see the different parts and regions of this, this river, the different sections of it. The Kootenai is a major river of the Northwest Plateau, fed mainly by glacier and snowmelt. It spans roughly 780 kilometers across British Columbia, Montana, and Idaho, ultimately contributing to the larger Columbia River, the largest in the Pacific Northwest. The water from the Kootenai eventually empties into the Pacific off the coast of the Washington-Oregon border. So we're just at the Kootenai Trout Hatchery, really cool place. I, uh, I saw this place when I was kind of researching some trails and, and things in this area and I noticed that you could come here to this hatchery and, and uh, take a tour and see all these trout that, uh, that they have here. Unfortunately, we're here after hours and the place is closed so didn't get to do the, do the tour that I wanted to do but it's still, uh, still cool and they still have some, some big old rainbow and brown trout just hanging out in this, in this pond here outside the outside the building. It's, it's really cool. I'll have to make my way back here one day when, when it's open. So if you're in the area, uh, Kootenai Trout Hatchery, check it out.
Over the course of the afternoon, the road has been deteriorating into two-track. All seems to be going well down the trail, then out of seemingly nowhere, we reach a major stopping point. A logging outfit has built a road right over top of our trail. If we can't get up and over this washout, it could spell disaster as we'd have to turn back and lose a day's worth of progress. Luckily, with a set of max tracks and a quick kinetic strap pull, everyone is up and over. It is unforeseen obstacles like these that no map or satellite image is able to tell you. All you can do is work together as a team and try to overcome. What's up? Just getting everything all packed up, ready to go. There's this whole system to have it going here. So I've already packed up the cot. Uh, that fits up underneath there. It's been pretty comfortable. Um, it's really not that bad. I don't need a sleeping pad underneath or anything. Diesel heater over here has been working pretty well. It's really nice and warm. So, I mean, I slept in a t-shirt last night and jeans and it was fine in my sleeping bag. So yeah, everything's working well. Time to pack all the boxes back and get the system all contained. In order to sleep both myself and John in the Troopy, I came up with a cot system in the lower part of the vehicle, while I sleep up top in the Alucab. So far it seems to be working great as a small two-bedroom apartment. Standing water on the trails has frozen overnight, making for less of a sloppy morning compared to our previous days. Or so we thought. Billy's Tacoma breaks through the ice of a seemingly innocent mud puddle, revealing a truck swallowing mud hole. Just say when and you'll get a pole. 
Not for lack of effort, it's out with the recovery gear. I just floated right across. A pull from the front isn't enough to do the trick, so Jason attempts to pull the stuck truck from the rear. We're gonna do a little Max Tracks fiction. Oh. Oh, we got one. Hey! That's a good one. OD green. Solid. Driving the 70. Dude, it's a lot of fun. Right hand drive, six shift, diesel. Uh, yeah, takes the bumps pretty well. We say goodbye to our friends Billy and Jason as they need to get back on the road home. It is just John and I now in the Troopy. As the saying goes, there is safety in numbers. Being on our own now in a single vehicle raises the risk for the rest of the trip. We will have to rely heavily on good judgment calls when it comes to obstacles and our own self-recovery gear should we need it. We turn off the highway back onto a trail that will take us to a section of the river I have marked on the map. This river is accessible in so many areas. Some places can be accessed right from the highway, while other sections demand reduced tire pressures and four low through technical terrain. I suppose it's the contrast between the two that makes this river and this region so interesting to explore. of the river here. <laughs> we weren't sure if we were going to be able to drive down onto the river, but uh, the vehicle is up there and the river is down there, so we're gonna have to walk the rest of the way. Finally, after a long day behind the wheel exploring the remote parts of the Kootenays, we found camp for the night. Right 
hanging out in the truck tonight because it's a little windy outside. So make some, some dinner in the truck tonight, get out of the wind. So come on in. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, man. <laughs> Good morning everyone. Another great night at camp last night. Um, this morning is our coldest morning so far at minus six. Um, so that's kind of uh, kind of interesting. We've been really uh, fortunate to have good weather on this trip. Uh, we've run into some snow a few times, but the it hasn't gotten too too cold. You know, down to minus tens, minus twenty. So thankful for that. So this morning we're just making a cup of a uh, cup of coffee here. And then we're gonna get back on the road north. We're gonna be back in Calgary today. Today's our last day. And then John's gonna be flying home. Before wrapping up this trip and heading home, we have one last objective to accomplish, and that is getting as close to the headwater of the Kootenai River as we can by vehicle. The weather deteriorates further and further the farther north we push. The landscape and climate have changed so much from where we started down at the USA border. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna walk the rest of the way in. It is deep, it's up to my knees right now. Just on this walking trail now here. Trying to see how far I can get down to the water. I don't see if I can actually go and touch the water. There's so much snow. There's so much more snow than I was anticipating. So that might uh, cause some issue trying to get down to the water. It's snowing. I don't think I can go any further, unfortunately, but the water's right there. If I take any, if I get any closer, I'm gonna step through the snow and down into the water. And at these temperatures, I definitely don't want to be doing that. So, <laughs> but uh, 
It's, it's so cool. We, we have reached the headwater of the Kootenai River. Uh, like I said, as far as we can get uh, by vehicle. Uh, not going to be hiking much in this weather today, but um, it was quite the journey, quite the journey from where we came from. So yeah, guys, thanks again for following along. These kinds of trips are my favorite, the kind with a specific destination and mission in mind with obstacles in between. It's great to be able to look back at how far you've come and remember all the hurdles you've overcome to complete that mission. Thanks so much for watching our Kootenai River adventure, and we'll see you next time.